Hey, techno studs, let's take even a deeper dive into NDP, Neighbor Discovery Protocol, specifically about neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisements. In this video, we're gonna talk about NDP and multicasting, then we're gonna get into neighbor solicitation, and then we'll talk about the solicited node multicast address. We're gonna get a little more in depth into that. We'll talk about neighbor solicitation packets and what those look like, and then neighbor solicitation advertisements. Really specifically what we're gonna take a look at is the addresses, the layer two and layer three addresses of these different packet types. And then finally, we'll do the same thing with the duplicate address detection. In our last video, we mentioned how ICMP is different than IP version 6. Although the headers look the same, there are some different content that's involved into it. So we have different ICMP packet types. So somewhere in there is a type field in the packet header uh, of it, and it will identify what type of packet it is. And what we're going to be looking at today is this neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisements and what the process is for the these neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisements. A few videos ago, we also talked about multicasting addresses. So that's going to be important to keep that in mind as well. We've got these FF02, which means that it's these are the multicasts that are going to stick to the local area network or the, the immediate subnet, the immediate network. And so it doesn't go beyond that, that uh, firewall or router or that layer three device. So we also have the one that we're particularly uh, going to be talking about here is the all nodes, the ones that get sent out, the multi multi cast address that gets sent out to all of the nodes and all of the hosts. So all of your nodes and hosts should be subscribing to this multicast address. And those multicast addresses, the IP version 6 relates to a layer 2 because we know that switches will forward based off of MAC addresses. And so we need a, a multicast MAC address to actually send this out. The other thing that we can draw from this as well is we have talked about in the past the solicited node multicast. This is the solicited node multicast is the multicast uh, address that the is belongs to a single machine. And so for your local link and some of your other connections, some of your other IP version 6 connections, it will create this solicited node multicast address. And the uh, MAC address layer is going to line up with what the IP version 6 address looks like as well. And so this is important uh, to use during this neighbor discovery protocol also. So we'll see how that plays a role in all of this. In IP version 4, we have what's called ARP address resolution protocol. And that translates between IP version 4 and the MAC address. We actually still need to communicate. This is still a layer 2 network. So we still need to communicate via layer 2 addresses or those MAC addresses. So we still need to translate from IP version 6 to those MAC addresses as well. But the problem is with ARP is it uses broadcasts to be able to discover that information. A packet gets sent out or a frame gets sent out and says, who belongs to this IP version 4 address? And then a reply back comes and says, I do with a MAC address. We no longer have that capability to send out broadcasts. And so we have to send out multicasts. And we do that through this neighbor solicitation. All right, in this scenario, this PC right here, this desktop, wants to ping this server right here. And what it knows is it knows its own MAC address and it knows its own link local address. And so it already has started out with some information here. It also knows this IP address because I'm typing in the ping command and then typing in this address to ping this address right here. And so next, what I don't know though, is it 
I don't know, this machine doesn't know the MAC address. And so for it to ping, it needs to send this information out with the layer three address, but it also needs the layer two address so the switch knows to forward onto this device right here. So we need to somehow translate between this link local address and this MAC address and figure out what the MAC address is. Now for the purpose of this, they're the same here because it's using that EUI 64, but that's not always going to be the case, that these are going to be different sometimes. So how does this process happen? Well, we send out a, a, a neighbor solicitation to get this information and it's going to respond back with a neighbor advertisement. But what? how are we going to send out a neighbor solicitation to this device? So uh, to get that information through the neighbor solicitation, let's take a look at how we use the solicited node multicast address. So each of these devices needs to figure out their solicited node multicast addresses. And so to do that, it's a pretty simple conversion. So here we have one of those uh, IP addresses, one of those link local addresses that are on those machines. The solicited node multicast address always starts out with FF02 colon colon one colon ff and then the remaining bits are filled in with the end bits of this machine so if we were to fill this in we'd say three three two two one one there you go there is the multicast address that this machine is going to join and so it's going to join this but when it tells the switch, the switch doesn't operate at a layer three. So it doesn't understand IP version six. So we actually have to translate this once again, and we have to translate it into a MAC address. Each one of these uh, multicast addresses get translated into a MAC address so that the switch can understand who belongs to which group. And so this starts out with 33FF, and then the last uh, eight of these digits just come down. So FF comes down, and then 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and then we fill that in. So here now is the MAC address of the, uh, of the multicast group associated with that machine. So the machine has this multicast address and it's going to elect to be a part of this multicast uh, group right here. It's a multicast group of one machine. So each of these devices figure out what their solicited node multicast address are and what their layer two multicast address is going to be. And then they tell the switch that they are part of these groups. So now this switch knows that this device right here coming in on whatever port it's coming in on is associated with this multicast group right here. And same thing with this PC right here. This switch now understands that this uh, PC is associated with that layer two multicast group. Let's get back to where this device is pinging this device and what that looks like. So what does this device know? Well, what, what it knows is its MAC address, its link local address, its solicited node multicast address, and its layer two MAC address that's associated with it. So that's information that it knows. It also knows the link local address of this machine over here because we typed in ping and then typed in this address right here. So it knows that information. Now what it's going to do is it needs to find out what is the MAC address of this machine before it can ping it. So it's gotta discover what this MAC address is. So what it's going to do to discover that is it's going to send a neighbor solicitation asking what is your MAC address? And it can do this by sending this information to the multicast group that's listed right here. So uh, then when it sends that out, then this switch will know how to forward it. 
So how does it know this information? Well, it can calculate it. Just like this machine calculated this information based off of what its link local address is, this machine can do the same thing. We knows the link local address because we typed ping and typed that in there, and it can calculate it to figure out what that uh, group it's supposed to be a part of, what multicast group it's supposed to be a part of. So it knows that information. So what it's going to do is it's going to calculate this information and that's what it's going to put into the layer two and layer three of this packet that it's going to send out, this frame that it's going to send out. And what the layer two and layer three uh, address that it's going to send as its source is going to be this information because it doesn't really need to use this solicited node multicast information for this uh, for this frame that's going out. It can actually use its own MAC address and its own link local address to send this packet out. So then the question is, what does this advertisement look like coming back? Well, we know it's a type 136. Well, in a type 136, what is going to be the destination layer two and layer three destination addresses and what's going to be the source layer two and layer three addresses? Well, at this point, because of it already knows its own MAC address and its link local address, so it can use this for the source information. It has no problem using that as the source information. And since the this device sent over with the original uh, neighbor solicitation sent over its own MAC address and its link local address, this machine now has that information. So it will use that as the destination layer two and layer three destination addresses. So this is a, just a straight unicast that is coming back to it. And so that unicast comes back and this device gets it. Now, uh, it could derive some of the information from the packet because it's being sent with this information. But really what happens in this scenario is that within the type 136, there are options down below of information that's being sent with it. And within that options, it will then verify the link local address and the MAC address that's associated with it. So now this machine right here can store that information of what the link local address is and what MAC address is associated with it. Throughout the last few videos, I've mentioned duplicate address detection multiple times. So let's get into the details of that now. So duplicate address detection uses neighbor solicitation. That is the ICMP type 135 that we've been talking about. It's the one that gets sent out to ask other devices, what is your MAC address? And so we're going to use that same packet, that same ICMP packet, but we're going to do a couple things that are a little different with this this time. And so when we use the duplicate address detection is going to be when it creates its own link local address. And so when it creates its own link local address, it needs to make sure no other devices on the network have that same link lo local address. And so what it's going to do is it's going to essentially ask out there, it's going to query for itself. It's going to ask out there, hey, does anybody belong to this link local address? And the way it's going to do it is kind of interesting. So when it sends out this ICMP packet type 135, it's going to send it out with its MAC address. That's not going to change. It's not a big deal. So it's just going to add that. For the layer two, it's going to be its own MAC address. For the layer three, it's going to be colon, colon. So we looked at some special addresses a few videos ago where the colon colon represents an unspecified address. So that is going to be the source layer three uh, ad address coming out with this packet is going to be colon colon, meaning that it's unspecified. So there's the layer two source and there's the layer three source. All right. So then what is it going to be for the destination? Well, the destination is going to be its solicited node 
multicast address. That's going to be the destination of this neighbor solicitation packet that it's sending out. And so it's sending that out right there. What is the layer two MAC address that it's going to send out? Well, it's going to be the associated MAC address that's associated with this. So what it will do is it will send it out to the switch. If there is another device that has already uh, has already established a connection with that with that group on the switch then it will send out to that device and that device can let this device know oh actually you don't want to take that that address that is a link local address that has already been used so you probably shouldn't take that However, if it doesn't get any response, if there's no other devices that respond to this, to this address going to, or this packet that's going to the solicited node multicast group, if there's no other devices that respond to it, then this device knows that this is a unique address that it has. And so therefore, the link local address is unique. And if the link local address is unique, then it can take that for its own. There's no duplicate address that's on the network. And now it's just verified through this neighbor solicitation that in fact, it is a unique address and can take ownership of that address. There you go. We really are digging into the weeds now of how this stuff works and what addresses are being entered into these different packets that are going back and forth. So we started talking about NDP and the multicasting. We got into neighbor solicitation and talked about neighbor solicitation. And then we started digging in even deeper. We talked about how it figures out its own solicited node multicast address. And based off of that solicited node multicast address, we can then do neighbor solicitations and figure out things like what is the MAC address associated with a certain IP address. It also figures out uh, the duplicate address detection to figure out if there's duplicate addresses that are on the network as well. And so there's quite a bit of power with this. And once again, this is why those link local addresses and why this process is so critical to IP version 6 is a pretty core part of how IP version 6 operates.